Hey there, Hofstra fans. Welcome to the WB Mason Coaches Report here on GoHofstra.com. My name is Kevin Dexter, joined as always by the head coach of the Hofstra Pride women's soccer team, Simon Radioff. Coach, thanks for the time. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, thanks, Kevin. Well, looking back at this past weekend for your team, two losses, but as you tell us every week, it's more about the performance than the results in those games. So, lost to Colgate on Friday, a loss to Wake Forest on Sunday. What were your overall thoughts? Uh, Colgate were a good team, uh, better than I believe our team expected. And as much as you advise them they're, they're a good team sometimes they don't believe you and Colgate they offensively came out and, and played a very strong game uh, Cathy got an organizer from, from forward were very dangerous and it took us a while to get into the game uh, after the second half after the half time uh, we realized we were winning a game it was almost a little bit too too little too late and we got back into the game at 2-2 two -two. and at that stage we thought Momentum's on our side. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna pull this out, and uh, unfortunately, Colgate had different ideas. Went back down and scored to make it three two, and you know, fortunate that's the breaks we got. So uh, disappointed in some aspects of Friday's game, but excited about other aspects. If that makes sense. Well, how about Sunday against Wake Forest? Wake Forest again. We uh, I'm never. Never concerned about playing against the good teams because I know I know the team will show up and, and do everything possible to to compete and be successful. Um, we had to figure out some things on Friday, which needed correcting. We spoke about it Friday after the game. We spoke about it Saturday at practice, and on Sunday the the team, to, credit, to their credit, applied everything we asked them of. Uh, they were organised. They were focused. They were disciplined. And we made it difficult for Wake Forest, and we made a game out of the uh, out of it all. And uh, unfortunately, we came on the bad side of it. But the performance against Wake Forest was uh, really good, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Coaches, you and I know obviously soccer not a stats-heavy sport. But when you look at the stat sheet, the, the few stats that there are, when you're out shooting teams like that, you're getting more corner kick opportunities than both teams like Colgate, Wake Forest. Even though those are losses, do you take those things as positives? No, exactly. When you you, you look at the stat sheets and like I said, the main one is goals, which we didn't win on. But against Colgate, we, we came out with a lot of offense, and uh, we were unfortunate. We had three breakaways, uh, which on a different day, we'd have scored two out of those three. Uh, we should have had a penalty kick, which um, unfortunately the officials weren't on our side this weekend. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, when you give up three goals, you're not going to win many games, and that's what we've told them about. Against Wade Forest, uh, their first goal was a blatant handball. Uh, I say blatant, but I didn't see it, but everybody else in the stand saw it, and the, one of the other coaches, Princeton coach, also commented on it after the game. Um, at that stage, it would have still been one nothing Hofstra, and who knows what would have gone on. But Wade Forest are a very good team, they're potent, they're, they play an attractive style. And uh, to be competing with a top 20 team, like Wake Forest in, in the way we did, uh, bodes well for the future. When you talk about giving up goals and five goals in total this weekend, what have you thought of Emily Morfitas here over the first few games of the season? She's not 100%, we know that. Uh, she's, getting, she's getting better by the weekend. Uh, she, she had some illnesses at the beginning of pre-season and she's just finally getting over them. Uh, I'm sure she would be the first one to admit that she's not 100%. We know she's not 100%. But she's still a very effective Division One goalkeeper, and she's just getting stronger and stronger. And hopefully by by this weekend and the following weekend, she's going to be 100, percent and she's going to be guiding us and leading us to to into CAA play. Well, there's one area of your team that I'm sure you can see that as a weakness, I guess, a little bit on this team is that the lack of size. And you see that in games say, against a team like Wake Forest, when they're winning more of the balls in the air and getting their heads on the free kicks and. and more that is that something that is a concern going forward when you play teams like that? Um, I thought it was going to be a concern, but um, in the women's game, a lot of it's timing. It's not necessarily size. And uh, if you get an individual who can time the ball, now, I, I look back at Tiffany Avino. Two years ago, she's probably the smallest person on the field, but she won more headers than anybody. And that's the type of uh, thing that can occur in the women's game. If, as long as the girls aggressive, um, can time the ball, has got some spring in her legs, she's going to win a lot of headers compared to a taller kid who might not be as athletic, who 
people might not be able to time it. Obviously, a tall player who can time it is always going to be difficult. Wayne Forrest had a couple, uh, Georgetown had a couple, and uh, you know we, we have to find ways to, to neutralise that height advantage, but we've done a fairly solid job so far. When you bring up a big time goal scorer like Tiffany Ovino, Sam Scolarici for your team this year has been a big time goal scorer goal in every game thus far this year. What has made her effective so far? It's amazing. Uh, I, uh, I guess the SID will have to do some research here, but I don't believe we've ever had a, a player scoring five successive goal games from the beginning of the season. Uh, I know Tiffany Ovino went on that run where she scored eight out of the last ten games. I don't know if it was five successive games. That's, um, that's for your status to do some research. But uh, ultimately, I think it's fantastic for Sam. She's scoring all different types of goals. Uh, it's not like you can stop her in one way because she's finding other ways to score. She's got tapping, she's got volleys, she's got long range, she's got headers. Um, it's great for us to come out like this. Uh, I'm sure she had a couple of injuries in pre season where I think her confidence was kind of rocked a little bit. I think she's getting it back now, and uh, she she knows she's a big part of our offense now. And also, on the same token, obviously Sam Scolarici, a sophomore, making an impact, but the freshmen continuing to play well this weekend despite the losses. What have you seen in their improvement in games four and five of their college careers? Well, again, I think we, against Wake Forest, we started with three central midfielders, who all freshmen, against a top twenty team in the nation. And so when you start with your midfield core, all freshmen, um, two forwards, sophomores, and one freshman. The front six are, you know, wet behind the ears, I would say, and, and compete and play. It, it, it looks really well for the future, but again, we, as, as far as we, we are concerned with the future, but it's about time now we, we start concentrating on getting results. Uh, the performances have been good. Uh, we've been pretty happy with the way we've, we've addressed issues and the teams applied those issues and, and become smoother in it. It's about time we conference is around the corner and we've got to start getting results and, and finding ways to win and put the performance to bed. Um, so, so that's going to be the focus this week. Uh, let's put a good performance in, but also let's, let's make sure we get the result at last. Let's get some reward for the efforts we've done. And um, I think we're turning the corner there. Well, next game for your team coming up this Friday. Finally come back home after a long road trip with the, those two games each weekend on the road. You come home St. Bonaventure on Friday, what do we expect to see from them? Well, they're a good team, they're an Atlantic 10 team, which is another very strong mid-major conference, and uh, they're in our region, so it's, it's a must-win from our perspective uh, for regional rankings, and hopefully as we move down the line, uh, national rankings. Uh, Manoj does a great job, uh, he's, a, he's a workhorse, you're constantly seeing him on the road, recruiting, and he's done a very good job so far at St. Bonaventure's. Uh, two years ago, they were extremely competitive. And hopefully, uh, he's got another, he's similar to me in, in his philosophy of scheduling strong teams. Mm -hmm. You know, they've played Marquette already, they've played uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh. They've played some really uh, big teams in this uh, non conference slate. And that's, that's his goal, same as us, is, you know, let's get out the kinks. Hopefully by conference we're ready to play and uh, it's pretty much the same as us in that boat. Well, what's going to be the key to victory here after Soccer Stadium on Friday night? The key to victory is just focus on ourselves. Uh, we have to work hard. We know if we're going to win games we, we cannot put us foot off the accelerator. We have to go 100% all the time. And when we do do that we're a very difficult team to play. When we don't, we're going to have some issues. You know, we get to a stage now where we're getting that consistency. Uh, the question is, can we be disciplined to do it against everybody? And if we can, we're going to be very, I, I believe we're going to be very successful this year as we move forward. But, you know, uh, as we know, it's college and it's a short season. A couple of injuries here, a couple of injuries there, a couple of mistakes, a couple of referees' decisions. And this season's gone from a really promising one to a bleak one. But I'm happy. I'm excited where we are. I think we're going to move forward, and I think we're going to we're going to have a good good second part of the season. Well, Coach Radio Squad is in action again this Friday night at home at Hofstra Soccer Stadium, seven o'clock start. Make sure you come out and support the Pride, Coach. Thanks very much for the time. Good luck. Thank you for having me. And thank you for tuning in to the WB Mason Coaches Report here on GoHofstra.com.